everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with thediceyreview.com, and today we're going to be looking at the community expansion for The Pursuit of Happiness. This game was released by Stronghold Games and Artipia Games. We've already done a run through for the base game, and we'll leave a link for that video in the description of this video. The community expansion comes with a number of new components, including 90 new cards, consisting of 48 community cards, 9 projects, 10 items and activities, 9 jobs, 3 new partners, 2 new life goals, 2 new child traits, and new player aids. The game comes with some new level indicators, and then new meeples and track indicators for the colors of the base game. The game comes with a new community board and the components for a fifth player. Now that we've looked at the new components, let's look at how to incorporate these components into setup. All of the new cards that relate to existing decks within the game can simply be shuffled in with those cards before playing. No extra step is needed with these cards. To incorporate the community board during setup, place the new community board near the playing area within easy reach of all players. Shuffle the stack of community cards and place them next to the community board. Place a marker in each of the player colors on the first space of the popularity track. Give each of the players a new community marker in their player color. Once all of this has been done, you're ready to start playing the game. The community expansion introduces a new type of card into the game, the community cards. These cards will depict various events that are happening in your community and allow you to interact with them. When you enter the first adult round of the game, Draw cards from the community stack and fill all the possible slots on the community board. The community expansion allows players to take a new action on their turn. On your turn, instead of performing one of the standard actions on the board, you can choose to engage. To engage with a community card, a player will take their community marker and place it on the card. If there is an engage cost when the player does this, they have to pay it when they place their marker on the card and they will gain the Engage reward. In this instance, the player would gain one popularity. If a community card has the multiple player marker on the top left, more than one player can engage with this community card. When the new player engages, they will have to pay the Engage cost and gain the Engage reward, just like any other player. If a card doesn't have the multiple player marker on the top left, like this Sell Lemonade card, once a player engages with the card, it's blocked. It can't be engaged by any other players. Players are allowed to engage with more than one community card in a round by placing one of their time markers on a new card. A player is limited by their popularity level. For instance, the green player is on a space of the popularity track above the two. That means that they can place up to two additional time markers this round on a community card if they want to. So all in all, the green player could engage in a total of three community cards, one for free with their community marker, and then two additional cards with their time markers because they are above the two on the popularity track. The gray player would be able to engage with one additional community card for a total of two cards in this round. At the end of the round, apply all of the normal end of round phase steps, but don't take back any of the hourglass markers that are placed on the community board. In this end of round phase, it was determined that the gray player will be the first player for the next round. Turn order is important when determining the outcome of a community card with more than one player on the card. So it's important to remember to complete all steps of the end of round phase except for removing the time markers from the community board. The outcome of community cards are determined from left to right, starting with the farthest card on the left of the community board. If a player is engaged with a community card, they get to select one of the possible outcomes, pay the cost, and then gain the corresponding reward. The gray player, for instance, could choose outcome number two, Town Central Square, on the New Year's Celebration card. To do this, the gray player would pay two influence, and then they would gain one creativity and one long-term happiness. After any player that has a marker on the card has chosen an outcome, the markers will be removed from the card, and the card will be discarded. When resolving a community card with more than one player marker on the card, the outcomes are resolved in player turn order. So in this instance, the gray player would get to choose which outcome they want to complete first. The gray player selects the largest pumpkin award and gains one influence. They then remove their marker from the card. 
it's important to note that multiple players can choose the same outcome. So in this instance, the green player could then choose the largest pumpkin award as well. They would remove their marker from the card, and then the card would be discarded. If there's still a community card in the farthest right space of the community board, after all cards have been resolved, that card will be removed and discarded. Then, any remaining cards on the community board will be shifted to the end of the line. After that's done, fill in all of the remaining spaces with new cards from the community pile. One last thing to note about the community row is that the community row cannot be refreshed by spending short-term happiness. What's there has to stay there until the end of the round. Now that we've looked at the community board in detail, let's look at the new track, the popularity track. Players will move up and down on the popularity track by engaging with their community. They can gain or lose popularity depending on how they engage. Each space on the popularity track corresponds to a popularity score. For example, you can see the first three spaces after the starting position relate to the number one. Being higher on the popularity track benefits a player in one of two different ways. One of the ways we've already discussed, it allows you to place more time markers and engage with more community cards during the round. For instance, the green player is able to engage with an additional two community cards, and the gray player is able to engage with an additional one community card. The other benefit to being higher on the popularity track is that you're going to gain points, or long-term happiness, equal to your popularity score at the end of each round. For instance, at the end of the round, the green player would gain two points. At the end of the round, the gray player would gain one point. After gaining points from your popularity score, each player will move their marker one space to the left on the popularity track. If a player ever has a popularity score of five and would gain another popularity, they gain one point instead. So in this instance, if the gray player were to gain another popularity, instead of moving, they would gain one point. The game comes with the components for a fifth player. To incorporate a fifth player into the game, during setup, deal five life goal cards to the side of the board even if you're playing with five players, when dealing new cards in the round, you will only deal out four on each of the rows. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment in the video here or send an email to thediceyreview at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can listen to the Dicey Review podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, and Tuned In. You can also read more of our written reviews at thediceyreview.com or connect with us at our guild at boardgamegeek.com. We're listed under podcasts and the Dicey Review. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you at the table.